Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Kerbal Space Program, and this is the Lathe Lander Mark V. If you remember, a few episodes back I was struggling to land on Lathe, and I wanted to prove that it's possible with the technology I have. So, I've been working on this shuttle here, and let me just talk you through it. So, on the top we have our heat shield. I did try and place it underneath here, the adapter, or underneath the decoupler. Either way, it didn't work properly, so I put it on top. I know it's not ideal, but that's what I did. Um, we have the whole landing thing, so we've got some parachutes. We have the atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer, a bit of a mouthful there. We've also got a surface scanning module. In hindsight, I don't actually need that, but I'm going to take it anyway. Uh, we've got the barometer, the seismometer, and a temperature gauge, and our communitron. We've got some batteries, solar panels. Next up is the interesting part. Now, I've changed uh, my previous rocket design to incorporate this. Now, what I did try and do was use atomic engines, but for some reason it wasn't giving me anywhere near enough efficiency. I I'm really not quite sure why. I tried changing the fuel tanks to just jet fuel. Still didn't work, so I was like, whatever, I'll just use it this way. So next up down the rocket, we have giant stages. We've got one big stage here with the advanced reaction wheel. And below that, another stage. Now, basically, if I talk you from the first stage upwards now, essentially, the when we first launch, it's going to be these rockets, uh, these thrusters, solid fuel thrusters, with these big ones around here. Now, coupled with that, I've got the skipper liquid fuel engine. You can see the thrust to weight ratios here are all quite alike, which is quite good on the left-hand side here. I'm using my engineer redux mod. Um, yeah, so after that stage, we get this stage with the big mainsail liquid engine uh, firing the rocket. Then we get this stage, which has another skipper, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty darn good. So now what I want to do is show you how it flies in takeoff. So here we are on the launch pad. We are ready for takeoff. Three, two, one. Power up my thrusters. And away we go. Look at this mighty behemoth flying into the sky. Now I've taken on board some of your advice by using the aerodynamic cones on top of the rockets. After this stage I don't really need any aerodynamics because we're in space uh, so I haven't included any more apart from the ones on these big jumbo fuel tanks and on the solid fuel tanks. Now you can see it kind of tilts ever so slightly. I'm not really sure why that is but it's not anything uh, that's concerning at all. And it flies pretty pretty straight. I've got some space tape keeping it all in place. And it's not a bad rocket. Coming in at about 160,000 Kerbal credits. To get to Lathe, which is probably one of the most difficult planets to get to, I think this is a pretty damn good rocket. And it doesn't use any of the more advanced rocketry, like the even bigger fuel tanks you can get. So I was quite impressed. Quite a feat of engineering. Um, let's just let the solid fuel burn away, and then I'll show you how it flies as we do our gravity burn. There we go, let's get rid of those. Now, I've used a lot of the tips you guys have been providing me with. I really have to uh, thank you for that. I love interacting with you guys, so if you want to keep sending me comments, keep critiquing, keep giving me tips and advice, I would greatly appreciate it. So here we go, it's not too bad. Um, this is a recreation of the actual launch taking me to Lathe. Um, so I'm not doing it perfectly, but essentially this is how it works. It's pretty good. Um, it needs all of these, uh, what do you call it, solar panels in order to provide it with enough power. Because once you get near lathe, uh, you end up being behind the sun sometimes, running out of electricity. And obviously the little Probodomine Octo uses uh, um, electricity consistently. So you really need a lot of electrical generation going on. And I've only got a few solar panels, so I think... As a feat of engineering, I've done rather well. Now, all I'm going to show you um, after this is how we actually approached lathe and landed on it. So, I'll see you in a moment. So, as promised, guys, here we are on our approach to lathe. I have sped this up times two and edited as is per usual for my uh, KSP career series. Um, in order to just get rid of some of the faff and the junk, basically. So here we are um, on our approach now. I needed to mess around with the maneuvering. I needed to make sure I was going to land on the sun-facing part. I wanted to just make sure I had enough electricity, really. In, in a number of dry runs, I kept running out of electricity. So here we are, anyway, 
trying to create our circular orbit around Lathe. Now, if you look closely at this lovely little blue planet, it doesn't actually have much land to land on. So I had to try, try and manipulate my maneuver around it or my orbit around it in order to try and find an actual place I could land. So here we go. I start creating a another maneuver basically so I can cross this rather large continent. It's one of the largest on here by, from what I could see. And it's facing the sun. So double whammy, bit of a bonus. Let's create our maneuver and head down there. Now hopefully what I'm going to do is maybe take over manually if this all, um, maneuver doesn't quite work out. But I figure at this point, if I'm hovering over the land, all i got to do is reduce my delta V enough, or reduce my velocity enough, to actually create our landing spot. And a little bit of an explosion there. That's what happens when you decouple and you start up your engine a bit too fast. Never mind. It's all part of the fun. So, if you... Sorry, just mind my voice a little bit. I'm a little bit sick. Anyway, so I'm now burning retrograde in order to land on this uh, continent. Now, the planet rotates relatively fast, so I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to get a nice landing spot or not. I, I couldn't even be picky about whether it was flat, whether it was raised. I mean, I didn't know if my parachutes would work. There was a lot of uncertainty coming in. All I knew was I needed to point my heat shield down so that <laughs> I could actually absorb all this heat being put on me i thought my my descent was too um too steep so i thought my rocket might blow up but thankfully no we got through it quite safely and i'm plummeting towards the ground and i'm keeping a look on my altitude and my apoapsis height and i'm like am i parachute gonna have time to actually work thankfully we got to a low enough speed where i could open them and i thought all right well i'll open up one of these solar panels just to make sure we've got enough electricity. Uh, <laughs> in hindsight, it was a bit stupid of me to do that, but I did it anyway. And then I'm like, uh-oh, are the parachutes actually going to deploy properly and slow us down enough? Thankfully, they did! And I'm so close to what I've been trying to achieve since probably Kerbal Space Program 0 0.18, you know, that version. I I'd never been able to land on lathe. It just was impossible for me, but I'm getting better at the game with your help, and I managed to get there. Now all I need to do here is make sure my rocket doesn't tip over and break. Because that was my fear. But we, we haven't got a flat bit to land on and we land on a wonky bit and we crash and our solar panel breaks off but we still got the other one. So now it's time to collect our science and I've sped this up. Sorry about that. But you can see I'm gathering a hell of a lot of science. So I just keep it for now because I want to make sure I've got enough electricity to send it. Now this uh, resource analysis, I imagine it has something to do with the Keythane. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. If anyone wants to let me know, please do. Um, so then I just start transmitting back the data, keeping an eye on whether we've got enough electricity to um, transmit it enough. But now this has actually landed on the planet. We can keep it there and maybe revisit it and it will give me more scientific data depending on the time of day, etc. I mean, I'm not quite sure. But... We are generating electricity, we are gathering science, and that can only help our Kerbals in the long term. It wasn't a perfect mission by any stretch of the imagination, but it was successful. And that is what, what I needed to do. I just needed to complete this contract, get a load of money for it. So I did that, and you can see I haven't quite got enough electricity to complete that, but never mind. I was happy. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.